Alcon VVT lens. Alcon's latest model, designed to give patients the maximum degree of independence from glasses without any compromises in vision quality. Well, at least that's what the manufacturer claims in their promotional materials. Let's go through this review together and figure out how this lens actually works, who it's suitable for, and whether it truly comes with no compromises in vision quality. Hi there, my name is Oleksi, and you're at the IOL Advisor channel, telling the truth about IOLs. If you want to know more about me, you can visit my website, ioladvisor.com. The link is in the description or in the channel description on YouTube. So, first of all, let's recall what the point of vision correction with an intraocular lens is, beyond just restoring transparency to the optical media of the eye when treating cataracts. Why is it important to talk about this? Because Vivity isn't just a regular artificial lens that simply replaces a cloudy lens with a clear one. Vivity belongs to what's known as the premium segment of intraocular lenses, whose purpose is to restore the highest possible quality of vision and provide a greater degree of independence from glasses. A combination of visual acuity at all distances and in all lighting conditions, plus contrast sensitivity, that's what defines the basic vision quality we talk about and expect from a young, healthy eye. And it's also the kind of vision quality we'd like to maintain into old age. And when we talk about lens replacement, whether for cataract treatment or refractive lens exchange, two more parameters are added to this basic vision quality. The first is color rendering, and the second is what's called halo effects. So, taking into account all these parameters I just mentioned, any review of an intraocular lens should include an understanding of how the lens performs, what vision quality it can provide under various conditions and at different distances what kind of vision it provides in terms of color rendering and halo effects. And most importantly, how the characteristics of a given intraocular lens match your personal visual needs. Because every patient has their own preferences for vision quality, shaped by their job, hobbies, lifestyle, past experiences, the kind of vision they were born with and what they've gotten used to. What a person expects from their future life, and there are many psychological aspects to this that people often don't realize until something goes wrong with their eyes. And that's exactly why, when choosing an intraocular lens, it's the doctor's job to conduct a thorough interview with the patient, to listen, to understand. And it's the patient's job to understand their own visual needs, to think about how they live, what they do, what they want from life, how willing they are to wear or not wear glasses, and so on. But that doesn't always happen. And that's why I help those patients who want to get the best possible vision quality to figure out which lens model is right for them. I listen to the person, explain what the options are, try to understand them, and offer advice on how to get clarity when choosing an intraocular lens. If you need my help choosing a lens, reach out through my website ioladvisor.com. The link is in the description of this video. Now, having reminded ourselves what good vision really is, and what parameters to pay attention to when selecting an intraocular lens, Let's move on to the actual review of the Alcon Vivity lens. First up is the material. The material used in the Alcon Vivity is exactly the same as that of the regular Alcon Acrisof or Alcon Panoptics lenses. It could be Acrisof or New Clarion material, however the optical characteristics in terms of performance are equal. It's a hydrophobic acrylic with a yellow filter, which I've talked about a lot in other videos on my channel. In fact, I've also covered global overviews of lens materials and the filters used in lenses. There's also a video about lens filters, so we won't spend time on that here. But when it comes to the technology behind the production of this lens, now that's where things get really interesting. We're talking specifically about the optical part of the lens, the part that actually forms the image on the retina and is responsible for that vision quality we're after. The optical technology behind the Alcon Vivity lens is what Alcon calls X-Wave technology or in other words, a technology that works with the wavefront of the intraocular lens. At its core, the Alcon Vivity is a true EDOF lens, that is, a lens with extended depth of focus. It has a single focal point, but provides a wider range of vision than a standard monofocal lens, and it has very few neuroadaptation issues, almost none really. And it also produces significantly fewer halo effects, which we'll also talk about today. Now let's dig deeper. What is this X-Wave technology Alcon talks about in their lens? Essentially, there are two main methods used to extend the focal range 
in intraocular lenses. The first is well known from the symphony lens, which I've also reviewed on my channel, and that's the diffractive echelette design, or diffractive rings. These are the little ring-like structures on lenses that you may have seen in images of multifocal lenses. This diffractive grid is used in two ways. To create multifocality, meaning separate focal points for near, intermediate, and distance vision, or like in the symphony lens, to extend the focus range without creating multiple distinct focal points. The second method of extending the focus, meaning creating that wide zone of clear vision, is by using spherical aberrations and higher order aberrations. This technology is used in what are known as enhanced monofocal lenses, such as Technus Ihants. It's also used in lenses like the Sci-Fi Miniwell. And now this same principle is used in the Alcon Vivity lens. So instead of diffractive rings, it works with spherical and higher order aberrations. What are the pros and cons of these two approaches? When we use diffractive rings, whether for multifocal or EDOF lenses, we tend to provoke more halo effects. If you're not familiar with halo effects, I have a separate video on the topic. You'll find the link in this corner and in the description. But in short, halo effects are unwanted visual artifacts around point light sources, like oncoming headlights at night. With diffractive optics, halo effects are quite common. With aberration-based technology, where the lens surface is smoother and doesn't use sharp transitions like those rings, halo effects occur far less frequently. So that's the first key difference, more or fewer halo effects. But there's one more important point, because as you probably know, in optics and in life, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If we gain one benefit, we usually pay for it in some other way. And the trade-off with this technology is that, unfortunately, contrast sensitivity, which I mentioned earlier, is physically reduced when using this type of aberration-based optics, sometimes quite noticeably. So, the very lack of diffractive rings in the production of Vivity, that's the key difference compared to other Edof lenses like Symphony. Let's take a closer look at what the marketing says and what clinical practice shows about these two aspects. The main and most important marketing message about Alcon Vivity is that it's a lens without halo effects. They talk about it so much and so often that at the last congress, they even plastered the restroom doors with stickers saying that, which was actually pretty funny, but that's not the point. The key message is, this is a lens without halo effects. However, there's an important nuance you should be aware of. Yes, the absence of diffractive rings does significantly reduce the number of halo effects compared to traditional diffractive technology by about 50%, but cut in half doesn't mean eliminated completely. According to FDA data, the incidence of halo effects with traditional diffractive lenses, for example, if we compare to Technus Symphony, is about 33 to 34%. With Vivity, that number is reduced by half to around 17%, which is still three times higher than the rate seen with a regular monofocal lens. And yes, even monofocal lenses can cause halo effects. I've mentioned in previous videos that halo effects with monofocal lenses occur in roughly 5% of cases. So yes, the Vivity lens significantly reduces the likelihood of halo effects compared to diffractive technology, but it does not bring it to zero. And it would be a mistake to assume that by choosing Vivity, you'll be completely protected from halo effects. The chances are low, but the risk is still there. That's why I wouldn't recommend that ophthalmologists promise patients the same kind of perfect result portrayed in the ads. And if you're considering Vivity, you should be prepared that some nuances may occur, which honestly is the case with any lens. I always say this. So here's the first takeaway. Vivity performs better in terms of halo effects, meaning night driving will likely be more comfortable. But that doesn't mean that overall night vision quality with Vivity will be better in every sense. Because there's another factor, contrast sensitivity. And when it comes to contrast sensitivity, things, let's say, are not ideal. And not because the lens itself is bad. Friends, it's because optical miracles don't exist. If we use a method to extend the depth of focus, there will always be a trade-off. And with Vivity, just like with the Sci-Fi Miniwell lens, contrast sensitivity takes a noticeable hit. This doesn't mean the lens is bad, or shouldn't be implanted, or anything like that. It simply means that when choosing this lens, you have to consider the condition of the retina, and even its expected condition a few years down the road. Because even if everything looks great now, the situation might change in the future. 
This applies to patients with glaucoma, especially early glaucoma, and any kind of retinal problems. And it especially applies to diabetic patients, who may develop retinal issues in the future, since diabetes tends to provoke retinal damage. In other words, if the patient's retina and contrast sensitivity are currently normal, then overall, Vivity will likely work just fine. But if there are existing retinal issues, or they're expected down the line, then Vivity's reduced contrast sensitivity, combined with already reduced retinal function, can lead to some pretty unpleasant outcomes, like losing detail in shadows under poor lighting. This isn't a secret. It's clearly stated in both the FDA documentation and the Alcon Vivity instructions. But here's the problem. Practically no one reads lens instructions, and that's pretty common. And Alcon often doesn't mention this at congresses, which I always find a bit surprising, or even frustrating, because we should be discussing both the pros and the cons of any lens. Doctors usually take their cues from other professionals or from what's said at these events, where they are told the lens is amazing, that there are no night vision issues. Well, not exactly none, but fewer. Because yes, halo effects are relatively well controlled, but we have other issues to consider, especially for patients with retinal conditions. So, keep that in mind when choosing this lens. Alright, I think we've cleared that up. Now let's move on to the most important and most exciting part. The defocus curve. Long-time viewers of this channel know what a defocus curve is. If this is your first time here, I have a video about the key parameters of intraocular lenses. The link is in this corner and in the description. So you can get a better understanding of what we're talking about. But we won't spend time on the definition of the focus curve now. Let's just take a look at how this lens performs at different distances from your eyes, based on official data and clinical experience, both from the US, Europe, and even Ukraine. So, here is the official defocus curve for Alcon Vivity. What should we note here? There are probably two key points. First, the lens provides good distance visual acuity, 2020 or a perfect 1.0. No real issues here but you should pay attention to the sharp drop in visual acuity at around 40 centimeters and closer. What do these two points tell us? First, if we compare this lens to something like the Symphony, there's less flexibility for micro monovision to improve near vision. For example, with the Symphony lens, distance visual acuity can potentially exceed 2020, assuming the patient has a healthy retina. So, if we shift the defocus curve slightly closer to the patient, distance vision doesn't suffer too much. With Vivity, however, the drop in distance vision becomes a bit more noticeable. Second, near vision acuity, if we calculate the lens purely for distance without shifting the defocus curve, Vivity performs a bit worse than Symphony, due to that steeper drop after the 40 cm mark. And this is supported by data on reading glasses independence from various studies. For example, according to a publication by Dr. Machiavelli, about 54% of patients with Alcon Vivity still need reading glasses. If we compare that to Technis Symphony, based on data from Professor Koshene, only 28% of patients require reading glasses. These results are based on lens implantation, without using micro monovision, meaning Vivity or Symphony were implanted in both eyes for maximum distance vision, and patients simply used what they had for near vision. Okay, so, we've covered the official data, now let's look at how the lens actually performs in real clinical practice. Having many discussions with various surgeons across the Europe and relying on the general feedback I hear from ophthalmologists in different countries, when I ask how Vivity works, what their impressions are, and what their personal clinical experience has been. And most of them say about the same thing. The lens is interesting, and definitely has a specific niche of patients it's well suited for. But the main point ophthalmologists mention is this, when lighting drops to around cloudy day level, just forget about reading without glasses. On the plus side, patients report fewer halo effects when asked about them. So again, near vision is worse, but fewer halos. But don't forget about contrast sensitivity and those fine shadow details. So, in practical terms, when it comes to the defocus curve, that is, visual acuity at various distances, the Alconvivity lens lands somewhere between the Technis Ihans and Symphony if we compare it to other extended depth of focus lenses. Now, not exactly right in the middle, because these lenses belong to very different classes. Vivity sits between Ahans and Symphony, leaning closer to Symphony, but it still falls short of Symphony on the defocus curve. On the other hand, it outperforms Symphony in terms of halo effects, but underperforms in contrast sensitivity. So it would be incorrect to say Vivity is just like Symphony, but better, 
in terms of halo effects or any other single aspect. Again, like many other lenses, these are just different tools. Now that we understand all these factors, let's sum up. Who is Alcon Vivity suitable for and when should you avoid it? In my personal opinion, and I fully agree with Alcon here, Vivity is a great choice for patients who are primarily concerned about halo effects, but still want an extended depth of focus for daily tasks. This includes people who often drive at night and are afraid of visual disturbances. Also, people who work with point light sources, like jewelers, dentists, maybe welders, and who don't prioritize perfect color rendering or being able to read without glasses at close distances. And of course, these patients must not have any current retinal problems or be at risk of developing them in the future, such as patients with glaucoma, etc. And for patients who either have retinal issues, early glaucoma, or concerns about contrast sensitivity drop, there is a new option from Johnson & Johnson Technis Pursi, which is available in Europe and Ukraine since 2024, and it gives a great results. Review will follow soon. Bottom line, as always, my main advice, choose your lens mindfully. Think about your specific visual needs, and only then will you be truly satisfied with your results after cataract surgery. See you next time.